All right, guys, it is a hot, sticky, miserable summer day here in the end times in paradise in East Bumblefuck, New Mexico, where me and the little dog are packing our bags to head probably to the just as hot and sweltering West Bumblefuck, New Mexico, to spend the next month or so. But before I head out on this hot, sticky Wednesday, June 7th, 2017, for my next big adventure, I want to leave you with my final climate meltdown, climate change meltdown roundup rant, where I simply go on to the pages of the mainstream media, namely the science pages at Yahoo News, to uh, <clears throat> bring you the latest examples from the science pages of how this planet is heading directly into a burning lake of fire. Here is the summer of 2017 heats up. So anyway, we're, we're going to have a little quiz. We're going to have a button quiz. See how well you guys know how to read the mainstream media. This is the first and second story coming off the science pages this very morning. The very first story, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to read a little bit of the headline at the beginning of the story, and you tell me which button is which. The first story come of the day, the number one story on the science page today, existing climate efforts, existing climate efforts, today, right now, expected to keep U.S. climate goals on track. The momentum of climate change efforts and the affordability of cleaner fuels will keep the United States moving towards its goals of cutting emissions despite the Trump administration's withdrawal from the Paris Global Accord. Business and government leaders in a growing alliance said. Okay. Now that was the number one story. And now we're going to go to the number two story right next to it. Uh, we have uh, this story. This is a new report from the International Energy Agency claiming world's energy system is not on track to meet climate goals. Barely one-tenth of renewable energy technology is ready to meet long-term climate change targets as governments have failed to adequately support large-scale deployment, a report by the International Energy Agency showed on Tuesday, um, talking about this unadulterated horseshit two degrees Celsius target. Uh, let's see, quote, transformation towards a clean energy system is not in line with stated international policy goals. Many technology areas suffer from a lack of policy support, blah, blah, blah. And to actually meet this unadulterated target, quote, to do so would require an unprecedented level of policy action and effort from all stakeholders. Thank you very much, International Energy Agency, for a refreshingly honest look at the unadulterated horseshit, uh, this whole Paris Climate Agreement. And so I'm quite sure you picked the right button. Okay, and I just, I just, 
Uh, well, no, we're actually going to get to this story in a minute from the New York Post. What is Andrew Friedman uh, up to? This this fellow from Mashable, he he comes in every. Uh, I think it, his rant, his column is on Tuesday. I really like this guy, and so uh, Andrew Friedman, I guess, is uh, patting himself on the back. As he should be, I'm gonna I'm gonna put Andrew on my list of people I need to interview. I wrote the best presidential briefing on global warming for Donald Trump. Given that no one seems to know what President Trump thinks about the reality of human caused climate change, perhaps we can agree that it's about time that he received a brief briefing on the subject. Um, normally, this would fall to a president's science advisor or someone from the White House Office of Science and Technology Policy or perhaps the head of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration or even the NASA Administrator. However, he has not appointed anyone to those positions, so it is up to me to get this on his desk. Okay, anyway, uh, cutting through to the uh, chase. Number one, Donald, global warming is real. It has not stopped or significantly slowed. It is not an artifact of bad data and it is part and it's not part of a continually changing natural climate cycle. Anyone who says, quote, the climate is always changing without making clear that current developments are new concerning and very real is not being honest. And anyone who tells you there are more jobs to be created in the coal industry then solar power is straight up lying. Okay, just to hit the high points, number two, climate change is our fault. Number three, scientists agree on this. Number four, Donald, it is already having damaging impacts and Number five, it will only get worse. Number six, weather is not climate. Thank you, Andrew Mashable. I'm sure Donald Trump is uh, dropping his uh, tweets to read your presidential briefing. What is Bloomberg? How is Bloomberg weighing in uh, on the Paris Climate Agreement now, which is back in the news? Uh, I think we know why. Take it away, Bloomberg. Paris Climate Deal needs new rules and clarity, scientists say. The Paris Climate Accord needs to be strengthened through new negotiations and national commitments to transparency, a new study showed. Okay, this is from, this is Bloomberg looking at this uh, new study from the journal Nature Communications. This is Joe Rogelge, the lead author of of the paper, blah, blah, blah. Okay, quote, in many cases, the actions described, you know, in, in this horseshit report are ambiguous or imprecise. Hmm, do you think so? Uh, and so the scientists are urging countries to implement a, quote, robust process that keeps track of where emissions are 
heading. I think we all know uh, where emissions are heading. Oh, God. Let's see, are we done with this goddamn... Okay, let's, let's move out of the Paris Climate Agreement. Dude, <laughs> let's move out of the Paris Climate... Anyway, moving along. I think we've been keeping up <clears throat> with this story. Maybe this will be the week. Uh, many articles of this, about this. One of the largest icebergs ever recorded set to melt off Antarctica in a few days. This event will fundamentally change the landscape of the continent. Okay, we're waiting. How many weeks have I been talking about this? Any day now. Uh, any day now. We will be back next week probably with the news that the single biggest iceberg ever recorded is now floating around in the Antarctic Ocean. <clears throat> Let's go from Antarctica to Southeast Asia. Mm, several stories on this one. This is International Business Times coverage. Southeast Asia smashes temperature records for its hottest month. April is the hottest month in the, in the Southeast Asian year, and this year it has broken all records. Temperatures uh, across Southeast Asia were an average of two to three degrees Celsius hotter in April of 2017, and some regions were as much as six degrees Celsius hotter than usual this year. This contributed to failed harvest, soaring energy consumption, and illness as populations struggled to keep cool. Yes. And, uh, wow, we're going to hear from Kalstub Thiramali of the good old University of Texas in Austin. Quote, looking, looking at this, it is, quote, it is unmistakable that the earth is warming globally due to the effect of increasing greenhouse gases. Uh, anyway, from Southeast Asia, to right here back to our own country, from The Guardian. The Guardian, uh, one of my favorite news sources. You have to go to England to find some intelligent reporting on the mainstream media here. Rare U.S. floods to become the norm if emissions are not cut, study warns. U.S. coastal areas are set to be deluged by far more frequent and severe flooding events if greenhouse gas emissions are not slashed, with rare floods becoming the norm for places such as New York City, Seattle, and San Diego, new research has found. This is this new research from Princeton uh, found that along all U.S. coastlines, the average risk of a, quote, 100-year flood will increase 40-fold, 40-fold by the year 2050. D, 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 so San Francisco 
and Seattle can expect to both get a 100-year flood every single year by 2050. D, 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 okay, I think we get the point, and uh, I think I have a house to sell uh, on a floodplain downstream from Austin, Texas. I think the, uh, the handwriting is on the wall. Time to sell my little, uh, my little safeguard from the collapse of global industrial civilization. Anyway, this one, guys, I don't have a, a I don't have time to get into all of this. Uh, th this is not directly related to climate change, but there are sure as shit uh, implications to climate change in here, which is this, this is way too deep to get into to this rant about this new study reveals increased risk of ozone loss over the central U.S. during summer months. This is a new study out of Harvard University reveals that the protective stratospheric ozone layer above the central U.S. is vulnerable to erosion during the summer months from ozone depleting chemical reactions exposing people, livestock, and crops to the harmful effects of UV radiation. And what this is looking at is as climate change and all of this shit uh, melts down all over this planet, these powerful storm systems in the Great Plains injecting water vapor. Uh, anybody who does not understand that water vapor is probably the number one uh, greenhouse gas. Uh, anyway, as I say, I would like to do it. I could do an entire rant over any one of these stories. This is just a roundup rant. Okay, from the central U.S. to 100 miles from the White House, Tangier Island is disappearing into the sea. This is Virginia's, on Virginia's Tangier Island, about 100 miles in a ferry ride from Washington, the waters of the Chesapeake Bay are edging dangerously up the shores of Tangier Island. At least a hundred feet of land have recently eroded. There you go. Uh, quoting one family who's been there, guy from, been, his family's been on this island for 200 years, and he's never seen anything like this this is William Eskridge, quote, It just seems like it's getting worse every year. I'm kind of fearful what it's going to be down the road. Okay, what is the UN up to? The UN, the United Nations is now this week saving the ocean to avert global catastrophe. There you go. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres on Monday urged countries to put aside national gain to save the oceans and avert a quote global catastrophe as he opened the first UN Ocean Conference. The uh, five-day meeting is the first bid ever by the United Nations to address the, the toughest problems facing 
our oceans from coral bleaching and plastic pollution to overfishing and rising sea levels due to climate change. Quote, conserving our oceans and using them sustainably is preserving life itself. There you go. And then he continues to talk about sustainable use of marine resources. Okay, I always like to uh, to peek into the New York Post. The New York Post, not quite to the level of the National Enquirer, but uh, they do get right to the point. Huge underwater bubbles of methane are waiting to burst and unleash chaos. Hmm, do you think so? A field of frozen domes has been spotted on the Arctic seabed and they could be about to blow. These kinds of giant explosive bubbles might have caused craters in the ocean which stretch nearly a mile across. They are packed with methane which is waiting to burst out of the seabed and cause chaos under the sea. Some have already grown to 1,640 feet across, scientists revealed in a new study published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Science. Yes. All right. And then I, uh, I already mentioned this story in one of a previous rants, but it bears repeating from the Washington Post, like champagne bottles being opened, scientists document an ancient Arctic methane explosion. Nearly 12,000 years ago, a sudden burst of methane surged from the bottom of the Arctic Ocean, leaving an array of gigantic craters in its wake. Blah, blah, blah. So, nearly 12,000 years ago. Hmm. Could that be, have anything to do with the end of the Ice Age? We will just have to wait to see whether history's getting ready to repeat itself. But of course, we're not in an ice age now. Okay, how about this? Uh, take a wild guess which button we can pick up with this headline. How a changing climate hurts children and contributes to famine. Now, uh, this is from uh, Forbes magazine. Yes. Uh, let's see. Famine and food crises are threatening the lives of millions of children across 13 countries in the Middle East and Africa. The effects of climate change through rising temperatures and inconsistent weather patterns are creating and worsening food crises. There you go. And we, we see the terrible effects of water scarcity today all over the world. In Ethiopia alone, it is anticipated that 9 million people will be without safe drinking water this year. I uh, think we get this. Thank you, Forbes magazine. 
for explaining this to us. Here we have a, a mystery solved. The mystery of the world's worst toxic algae blooms has been solved, apparently due to cold water upswells from the deeper oceans. Uh, what's the link? Do they mention a link to climate change? Uh, does it say anything about... Uh, okay. The researchers think that the unusual chemistry of Monterey Bay could be linked to climate change as the Northeast Pacific Ocean warms, knowing the conditions that lead to the particularly deadly algae blooms could help fisheries, blah, blah, blah. Uh, this is just one more way that the oceans are fucked. Okay, uh, now this story, guys, uh, I might have to, this sort of one of my sub-Saharan African rants. Uh, this is from Reuters News, where a, a column by Alexandra Bilek. Alexandra Bilek, she works for whoever the International Displacement Monitoring Center and her rant is, don't just blame drought for displacement in Horn of Africa. And uh, so what this story is, that I'm glad to see it, uh, is pointing out how drought is one of many factors uh, ramping up all of the, these various human migrations, uh, all inside Africa, as what we're talking about 20 million sub Saharan Africans getting their black asses to Honkyville, I'm sorry, 60 million over the next 20 years. So, Alexandra, I love this picture. She has this picture of one woman, and I'm counting at least four children in the background of the study. So Alexandra is looking at all of the other factors besides climate change responsible for displacement in Sub-Saharan Africa. How many times do you think you will see the word overpopulation mentioned by a spokesman for the internal displacement monitoring center. If you, if your guess was the number zero, the number zero, give yourself a gold star. All right, two more stories here. Uh, who is this from? Uh, not sure who this from, and this is looking from, uh, I don't know who this guy Ryan Cooper is, uh, but Ryan Cooper is looking at the terrible risk management of climate change moderates. Can conservative intellectuals, there's a contradiction in terms can conservative intellectuals think straight about climate change? Back in 2014, I argued that their fixation with the so-called global warming pause demonstrated most of them could not. And then after 2014, 2015, and 2016, all came in as the hottest years ever recorded, each one breaking the previous year's record and the last by a huge margin. I checked back in to see whether such people had recanted and 
admitted their previous error. And as a few weeks ago, at least one of these people he looked at had not any anyway uh, he just just looking at now these people called moderates climate anyway guys I again I could do an entire uh, rant on this but I understand the attention span of the average human being even here on Humpty Dumpty tribe I uh, understand it that I'm already talking to myself so we're going to close with one look from it would be real nice if I knew who this was see uh, I have no idea who the uh, mainstream media article is because it, it, anyway I, I don't have time to get into it why I don't know who the fuck this is uh, food farming for the future oh, this is some outfit called Earthrise Earthrise looks at some of the innovative methods of sustainable farming and food production as climate change intensifies Climate change has disrupted weather patterns across the globe, destroying farmland and increasing pest outbreaks. As a result, both the livelihoods of farmers and food supplies have been pushed to the breaking point. But Earthrise sets off to South Africa and Nepal to see how some newly developed solutions are helping farmers to produce food for a growing population as conditions change. Oh, this is Al Jazeera. This is who Al Jazeera uh, wants us to tell us what you think. Here's what I think. That we've seen, I'm going to wrap up this final version. Someone, is that you breaking in the house, Beverly, or someone else? That is you. We have a, an intruder in the house intruder in the house. Anyway, I gotta go check out what this intruder is up to in the house. And then me and the little dog, we need to wrap up our final, our final rant from East Bumblefuck, New Mexico, because we gotta pack up the gas sucking truck, have one more meal of organic broccoli from our garden here in paradise. And we're off to head to West Bumblefuck, New Mexico. And I don't know how this is all going to fall out. There's no internet where I'm going, guys. So we are depending totally for the next month on the Wi-Fi at the West Bumblefuck, New Mexico Community Library. So uh, as far as I know, it's going to get me through the next month. Bye, guys. Are you ready to go to West Bumblefuck, New Mexico, for your next adventure?